Right. So I have no idea how we're going to explain this one or how we're going to do it in the time, but I want to talk about this match. For starters, shout out to Riot Cabaret. Amazing promotion over here in the UK. Make sure you do indeed check them out. I was very, very lucky and very, very privileged to be a part of their show uh, about a month or so ago, six weeks ago, whenever it was. And I did two matches on this evening. One, I did a triple threat match. We're going to do a separate video on that as a win. Shout out to my man, Tommy Carl, who I know is still uh, healing up right now. Super good dude. And shout out to Tate Mayfairs as well. We need to skirt around Tate because him and I have a feud. But yeah, throw out some love. So basically, right, Cabaret came to me. And I was, so I came to them and said, I'd love to be involved. And they very nicely came back to me. So we did the match at the start of the show. But then in the second half of the show, which is what you're watching now, which is why it's a bit weird. You've come and you're like, what is going on? We, um, man, <laughs> foot stump on the stage a bit much. Uh, we, um, we came up with this idea. Well, they, so they came up with it. They, they had a 90s rumble. So it was a rumble based on 1990s ideas. So you'll see a man like Doris in a minute, who is another great uh, independent British wrestler as the Fresh Prince of Belair. Uh, Alexis Falcon and Charles Crowley did some Pokemon stuff. Uh, Session Moth Martin. I can't remember who Session Moth Martin. Oh, she was Jerry from the Spice Girls. I'm going to stop naming people because I forget someone and I feel absolutely terrible. And they said to me, as you'll see in just one second, Simon, do you want to be Stone Cold Simon Miller? And I was like, I absolutely want to be Stone Cold Simon Miller. And the main reason I want to be Stone Cold Simon Miller is because I knew that when that glass broke, I was going to get a relative, obviously, to the size of the building, Steve Austin Pop. And it was going to have nothing to do with me. Nobody would care. But given that it was a surprise and, go and given that I guess nobody would have assumed that would happen because nobody else in the match was an Attitude Era star that you would get that reaction that wrestling fans always give. <laughs> Murdoch, man. Um, and so I was, and also it just sounds fun. And that's my big thing with professional wrestling is I just want to, I just want to have as much fun, as much fun as possible. Oh yeah, Danny Black was in it as well with, uh, as a Backstreet Boy. Check out all these people that I am talking about now if you are interesting. I promise you that they are, you know, they're very, very entertaining and they're, they're very, very, very fun. Hence why they were probably put into, into a match like this. But it got even more absurd. And this is why I've just given it a couple of minutes before I, I do come down. Because yes, the last entry in it, and you may have seen a short that I did on this a couple of months ago too, was Mr. Blobby. <laughs> now, for my American friends, you probably don't know who Mr. Blobby is. In many ways, you're lucky. We'll talk about that in seconds. Because here we go. Two, one. Best thing ever. And I got my, uh, amazingly, I had these white t-shirts of eight days ago. <laughs> so I got to wear my stupid white t shirt Everyone goes, Middle, that's a ripoff. You're going to get sued. Bro, I've been wearing this for a long ass time. I bought jean shorts. Never had a pair of jean shorts. My word, do I love jean shorts. <laughs> Who knew that? I've kept them now. They got a good old wash and I'm going to wear them all the time. And I just got to storm around being, I mean, not the best Stone Cold parody ever, but I can't lie. I was enjoying it too much is probably the best way to put it and when you're enjoying when you're enjoying so so much you know i'm really in character just having the time of my life and you could already tell what's going to happen here if you can't you you didn't grow up in the action era watching wrestling so i go to the four corners look at this pile of people and then look at this heel look at this bad guy look at this 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 piece of crap pulls me down this is actually quite funny because well, we'll get to it. So Murdoch's running me down, blah, blah, blah. And obviously, I was meant to give him the stunner and throw him out. He kept saying to me, Miller, don't forget to throw me out. So I won't forget to throw you out. But it's such an adrenaline rush. I was having such a good time. I forgot to throw him out. But he's such a pro and he's so good. And then we get to do stuff like this. He flips me off. Duck. Let's just start busting out stunners. Some stunners are all right. Some stunners are absolutely terrible. The one I take from Mr. Blobby was worse than one that Vince McMahon would take from Steve Austin. But then um, Charles come in. Alexis comes in. Well, we'll give you the double stunner, which actually was harder to sell than I realized. It's like a very intricate, a very intricate thing. And then Danny Black, bless him, does his whole. I said to Danny, Danny, you have to take a stunner because as always... <laughs> Danny takes it like a flipping hero. I know some people get so mad about this wrestling stuff, but not me. And then, you know, as was mentioned, I can't remember whose idea it was. They were like, well, we got to do a, a beer bath spot, whatever the hell we call it. And that's when Mark, again, what a pro. He knew what to do, and I'm breaking the fourth wall as always. So he gets tossed. Don't interact. Actually, probably worked out better, you know, one of those things you do on the fly. And then, of course, I did. I, I think Session Moth suggested this, like, you got to stun me. So we can stun it to her, too. It's what he would do. Like he did to Pat McAfee at last year's WrestleMania. Uh, and and I, that's, what, that's what pretty much all I did. And I had the best time ever. And I had a huge smile on my face. And when I, when I went backstage, I was like, well, I've ticked that box. And I, n I never have to worry about it again. But yes, yeah, so Mr. Blobby for our American friends. You're about to be terrified. Now, I, I love Mr. Blobby. But I'm also terrified of Mr. Blobby. Because Mr. Blobby is a very odd and a very strange, <laughs> a very strange creation. But he is a... I can't even think of the right word. He is an institution, I suppose, over here. I mean, he was on Noel's house party back in the 90s, hence why he's in the 90s rumble. 
even though he's not really featured in any real prominent position, you have to license him. Like the BBC, I think the BBC own it, and the person in this in the costume, I know, brain kayfabe here, is the uh, official Mr. Blobby player or whatever the hell the, the, the right word would be. And they're very strict on this. And if you try and parody Mr. Blobby, they'll probably send you a cease and desist. So people getting worried about my T-shirt, you don't need to worry about it. But this was just the most hilarious thing ever because when you're trying to plan a wrestling match with a guy who's never done any wrestling either but also is in a costume where he can't see that much you're like well this is going to be absolutely fascinating so of course mr blobby is the is the super duper baby face even anyone that was a, a baby face in the match is now a heel because you're not gonna be able to compete with mr blobby although we are helping him in there again it's, it, it's not his fault not that costume i touched that costume which is kind of cool a like, little weird thing to say i mean it's just there's a lot to it there's a lot to the costume. So Mr. Blobby comes in. I think he does some kind of like, um, um, what do you call it? A helicopter, there's not really a helicopter spin. He just spins his arms like it's 1986. And then we <laughs> just ran into him. And I take the worst bump ever there. Because again, it, it's so hard to, it was just really, really, you can just see how awkward it is. This is why I love it. It's my favorite stuff when it comes to wrestling. It's just funny, funny shib. It's so dumb. I delivered to that bump better. I was like, I'm bumping with Mr. Blobby. Ain't no way I'm no selling Mr. Blobby. And I didn't remember what this was. Oh, Danny Black's just bumping his ass off. What a damn hero he really, really is. Um, and then, of course, the, we, we, we jump him. How can we not? But, you know, he's, he's an 80s baby face. So you know what's going to happen. He's going to explode. And once again, trying to anticipate this was impossible because he didn't know what he was going to do. So I definitely went way too early there. <laughs> well, I remember at the time thinking, man, you've gone too early. But I was also cracking up the whole time. And I remember, shout out to James and Sean who run who run Right Cabaret. They sent me a message going, Miller, like, we just got footage of you in the corner. That like, there, that I'm just I was just dying. I was just laughing trying to cover it. So I was like, this is not a. It was half selling and half laughing because watching man like Doree, who again is a super good dude, merch machine <laughs> buys merch, do this, and he was insistent that he did this too. That Mr. Blobby almost threw him out. And I was like, you're you're a crazy man. And then of course we had to get the stunner in. This was so funny. So we do the whole, you know, the whole Stone Cold thing. I got to flip off Mr. Blobby. Never in my wildest dreams that that was going to happen. But I think he forgot. And it's just terrible. It's just terrible. It makes me so happy. I wouldn't want it to be good. I don't want to end my life, which will happen one day in the hopefully not too, uh, no, the hopefully in the long future. And think that every stunner I took was a good one screw that i want to take one bad one i was proud remember someone sent me a message Miller, you took a terrible stunner yeah i did Pff, oh dear what a terrible day i'm having i didn't take the best stunner from mr blobby oh i'll get over it you'll be shocked to hear and then of course session moth's gimmick is to grind so she grinds on mr blobby that must have hurt you know again there's a lot of blob to mr blobby and then <laughs> falcon and flicker and crowley kick the crap out of mr blobby honestly i kind of feel like i'm on drugs I felt like I was on drugs then, and I feel like this I was on drugs now. My wrestling career is never going to top this. It's just not. And the fact he picked him out again, very, very impressive. Because one, a lot to it. Uh, I mean, the guy was just a normal-sized human being. But, you know, we had to protect him. You can't hurt the dude. So he gently goes, he, he gently goes over. And then, of course, it's 2023. So what do you do in 2023? Uh, well, that or your Mil Maracas in, in 1997. You eliminate yourself by doing a dive. <laughs> <laughs> which is what Mr. Blobby did. I suppose he didn't know the rules. That's all I can say. He didn't know the rules today, <laughs> which means he's been eliminated. I mean, we'll get to the point where I get thrown out. It's very, very soon after. I'd done what I'd come to do. But given that the last match we did, and thank you so much for the support on that one, given the last match we did was very serious indie wrestling, maybe the sort of the most of those kind of matches I've ever had, I was like, well, we have to do a 180 here because that's my favorite thing with wrestling. I did the Luthes, I did the Luthes press first. I forgot, I forgot if I did this. I did the Luthes, but Charles Crowley too. That's fun. That's good. Go absolutely. What happens now though? I don't remember. Oh man, take a kick from it. That's quite a good kick. I quite like that. I don't remember this at all. Then what do they do? They just chuck me out. Yeah, the same side as Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blobby. I remember coming down, being like, oh man, I'm going to hit Mr. Blobby. <laughs> and that's it. I'm done. And uh, I sold my leg. I was impressed with that. So, again, shout out to Right Cabaret. Shout out to everybody in the match. A shorter video than usual with these wrestling things. But once more, I think that kind of sums up how awesome wrestling is. I got to be Stone Cold Steve Austin for a day. So now all i got to do is be Bret Hart and all of my dreams will come true. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hit the bell, ding, ding. So you know when other videos are going live. There will be a video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Helps the channel massively. Otherwise, grillandmind.com. Force that Simon's going to get 10% off. Load of good new stuff on there at the moment. My Monday, they have the best pre-workout stimulator I've ever had in my life. And again, I'm not a stim fiend, so I'm sure it affected me more. 
You're going to get some if you're into it. Derek is crazy. He's like some kind of wild scientist. Also, on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com for Simon316. Check out my wrestling podcast, also live here on YouTube. On Cameo, if you want a personalized message and t shirts, wrestling t shirts, Samsung Athletic t shirts, all in the description below. And I think that's it. Once again, thanks for joining me. Take care of yourself. See you soon.